Hi, welcome to this real Python video course on Python Booleans. My name is Caesar, and I'm going to be your instructor for the course. Whether you're a beginner programmer or professional software developer, you know that most useful programs rely on conditional execution. In other words, the ability to make decisions and then take the appropriate action. Let me ask you a few questions. Are your if statements still looking like this? For example, you'll execute one function or another depending on whether the length of some list is greater than zero, or in other words, if the list is non-empty. Or as another example, if some variable that's supposed to hold a string is not the empty string, then you'll display one greeting, otherwise you'll display another. Or say you have the return value of a couple of functions and execution depends on the order of these values. So for example, if the return value of function 1 is less than the return value of function 2 and the return value of function 2 is less than max length, then you'll do something otherwise you'll do something else. All right, last question. Which of the following is valid Python syntax? Say this jumbled mess of various conditional statements. So one less than two in the list one, two, and so on. Or how about this awkward looking expression involving true and false values with mathematical operators? Or set birthday equal to get birthday or unknown. If you're unsure which of these is valid Python syntax or how the first few if statements could be improved, then maybe you need to take a closer look at Python's built-in Boolean data type and how to take advantage of Python's implementation of the various comparison and Boolean operators. Here's just a couple of things that you'll learn after taking this course. You'll learn how to write more succinct conditional statements, which can really pay off because a lot of your code is all about making decisions. You'll learn how to leverage Python's implementation of the Boolean and comparison operators to write more computationally efficient code. And in general, broaden your understanding of the truth value of built-in and user-defined objects. By the end of this course, you'll realize that there's much more to Python Booleans than just true and false. All right, here's a quick rundown of what you'll learn in this course. We'll start off by taking a look at the Python Boolean type. This is the main character in this course, and you'll see what the relationship is to the integer class. We'll then start a sequence of three lessons on the main Boolean operators in Python. We'll start off with the not operator, and then move on to the and operator, and then the or operator. We'll then take a look at the various comparison operators, and how you can chain these operators to write computationally efficient code. We'll then talk about how Python decides when objects are considered true and false and how you can build in Boolean testing into your own classes. We'll wrap things up with a summary. All right, let's get to it. It wasn't until 2002 that the Boolean class was added, and if you're interested in knowing what the thought process was when adding the class, check out PEP 285. One of the main reasons why the Boolean class was added was to standardize the process of deciding when a condition is either true or false. Remember, a lot of your code is all about making decisions and then taking the appropriate action. The Boolean class is implemented as a subclass of the integer class, and so it inherits all of the mathematical operations that exist in the integer class. The constructor function to the Boolean class is called bool, and bool can therefore be used to transform an object to a Boolean data type. Of course, unless the object that you're trying to transform is a Python built-in object, your class has to define a way to transform the object into a Boolean type. And we'll discuss this in a future lesson. There are only two possible values of an instance of the Boolean data type, either true or false. True and false are also keywords, which means that you can't use them as variable names or identifier names in your programs. When typecasted into integer objects, true evaluates to 1 and false evaluates to 0. So since the Boolean class is a subclass of the integer class, you can do things like this. Now this may not seem all that useful, but we'll look at an example where you may actually want to take advantage of this. All right, let's take a look at some examples. 
let's start by taking a look at the help documentation for the Boolean class. The constructor to the Boolean class is called bool, and if the input to the Boolean constructor is x, and x has a value or evaluates to a value of true, then the constructor returns true, and otherwise it's going to return false. In an upcoming lesson, we'll talk about how Python decides when an object should evaluate to true and when it should evaluate to false. The two built-in constants true and false are the only two instances of the Boolean class, and the Boolean class is a subclass of the integer class. Now, since the Boolean class is a subclass of the integer class, it inherits all of the mathematical operations that exist in the integer class. Now, in addition to these operators, the two most important operators that are particular to the Boolean class are AND and OR, and we'll talk about these in depth later on in a video. Now, for good measure, let's verify that the Boolean class is indeed a subclass of the integer class. So, is Boolean a subclass of int? And we get true. And let's also verify that true and false are instances of the Boolean class. So is true an instance of bool, we get true, and is false an instance of bool, and we also get true. Now even though that true evaluates to the integer 1 when typecast into an integer, 1, or the integer 1, is not an instance of the Boolean class, so we get false in this case. And if we try the same thing with the 0 integer, we're also going to get false. Let's verify that true and false are built-in keywords. So let's import the keyword module. And the keyword module contains a list of all of the keywords in Python, and the list is called kwList, or keyword list. And at the very top of this list, along with the none keyword, is false and true. Let's now see an example that demonstrates how true and false behave when they're integers. So if you go ahead and typecast true as an integer, you're going to get 1. And then if you do the same thing for false, you're going to get the integer 0. So that means, for example, if you were to say what's true plus true, plus let's say false, and then maybe you want to add one more true, you're going to get three, right? So true plus true plus false plus true is three. This may not seem all that useful, but you can actually take advantage of this when you want to determine the number of occurrences of a Boolean condition in a list. Let me show you an example. So here's your problem. You have a list of integers, say stored in a list called codes, and maybe these integers represent some sort of code, and you want to know how many of these integers are divisible by, say, 3. So let's write down a few more, and let's introduce a new variable, n, so n equal to 3. So again, the problem is how many of these integers are divisible by 3. Why don't you use a list comprehension? You loop over the integers of the codes list, apply the modulo operator, and whenever you get a zero, you know that you have a multiple of three. So start off by writing for C in codes, and you want to apply the modulo operator to C, and you know that you're going to get an integer, and whenever you get zero, you have a multiple of three. So use the equality operator, and this is a Boolean operator, which we'll discuss later on in a future lesson. But for the moment, what this will do is, whenever we get a zero, then that's a multiple of three, and so this comparison operator, this equality operator, will return true exactly when we have a multiple of three. And I'm certain you've probably used this operator before. We'll talk about it later on in a future lesson. So what happens when you run this? Well, you get a list of true and false values, or a Boolean list. And you know that when you sum up Booleans, true evaluates to 1 and false evaluates to 0. So if you go ahead and sum this list, you're going to get 4. So this tells you that 4 of those integers are divisible by 3 or multiple of 3. And in this case, you can see them exactly. It's the integer 1 in the list, the third one, the fourth, and the fifth one. 
So this is a nice clean way of determining how many occurrences of some sort of Boolean expression, in this case, how many of the integers are multiple of three, using the fact that true evaluates to one and false evaluates to zero, and then summing up this list of these true and false values. All right, well, that ends the first lesson on the Boolean data type built into Python. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at the Boolean operators, and in particular, we'll focus on the operators not and an or that are built into Python and are by far the most widely used operators. First of all, a Boolean operator takes as input one or more Booleans and returns a Boolean. It's convenient to completely specify a Boolean operator using what's called the truth table, and we'll do so for the three Boolean operators that we'll focus on. In the mathematical theory of Boolean algebra, the three operators, not, and, and, or, play an important role. And the reason is because any Boolean operator can be written in some way as a function of these three. These three operators are implemented in Python as not, and, and, or, all lowercase. You'll see later on that Python's implementation of AND and OR makes it easy to write efficient and readable code. All right, let's start off with the NOT operator. The NOT operator is the only unary Boolean operator implemented in Python. Unary is just a fancy word meaning that the operator takes only one input. In Python, to apply the NOT operator on the input X, you simply type NOT X. However, NOT can be applied to any object, not just Boolean data types. NOT always returns either true or false, depending on the Boolean value of the input. Now, I mention this because NOT is the only Boolean operator that we'll discuss that always returns a Boolean data type. The other two operators that we'll talk about, AND and OR, they will return one of the values of the inputs, and we'll discuss this in upcoming lessons and how you can take advantage of it. Here is the truth table to the NOT operator. So if the input X has a Boolean value of true, then NOT X returns false. And if the input X has an input value of false, then NOT X returns true. So not just simply negates the Boolean value of its input. All right, let's try out how the not operator works on just some basic objects. So not true, as we saw, will return false, and not false will return true. We can also apply not, say, to integers. So not one returns false. And so a way to interpret this is that one has a truth value of true, and so not true returns false, whereas not zero returns true. And so a way to interpret this is that zero has a truth value of false, and so not false is why we get true. Let's apply not to a string. So for example, not hello world. In this case, we get false. So the idea is that this non-empty string has a true value, and so not true is false. Whereas if you were to try not with the empty string, you're going to get true. So you can interpret this as meaning that the empty string has a Boolean value of false. Let's try this, say, on a list. So let's say the list 1, 2, 3, not of this list returns false. So a way for you to interpret this is that this non-empty list has a Boolean value of true. Whereas if you were to try not with the empty list, in this case, you get true. And so you interpret this as meaning that the empty list has a Boolean value of false. Let's take a look at a quick example of how you could use the not operator to set a default value for a string in case the string is empty. So for example, let's suppose that you have a field in either a database or maybe the input in some form, and it's supposed to contain the first name of a user, and the user didn't pass in a first name, and so first name is an empty string. And you want to display something for that first name, and what you could do is then set a default value that you want to display in case the first name is an empty string. 
So you could do this using an if statement, if not first name. In this case, if first name is an empty string, it will have a Boolean value of false and not false is true. So we'll enter into the if block. And then maybe what you want to do is set the first name string to say something like not given. The idea is going to be that if first name is an empty string, then you're going to display somewhere that the first name wasn't given. So go ahead and run that code. And so in this case, because first name is an empty string, the if condition is going to be true. And so first name is given the value of not given. On the other hand, if first name does have a non-empty value, so for example, Luigi, in this case, our if condition in the not first name will return a value of false because a non-empty string has a Boolean value of true and not true returns false. And so this part of the code won't be run inside the if statement. So in this case, our first name still has a value of Luigi. Now you could do this a little bit faster using the ternary operator in Python. For example, in the case where you have an empty string, you could do something like first name, we'll set it equal to not given if the user did not pass a first name. And so in this case, we'll say not given if not first name. Otherwise, first name should just stay as the value that was passed in by the user. So we'll, we'll return first name. So in this case, because the string first name was empty, it's going to be assigned a value of not given. Whereas in the case where the name was Luigi, in this case, when we use the ternary operator, the not first name returns a value of false because in this case, first name is a non-empty string. And so this condition after the if statement is false. And so the value that first name is set to is just the value that it currently holds, which in this case was Luigi. So if we run this code, first name is still Luigi. All right, this ends this lesson on the not operator. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at the and operator.